what is lupus? Right. So I know I know the disease. Latin means wolf. Yeah. I don't know what that. I don't yeah. know how that relates to the disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lupus is an autoimmune condition. So I tell people all the time, we all have immune system. They protect us against viruses. They protect us against bacteria. Um, but when you have lupus, your immune system becomes active against yourself. So your own healthy tissues become a target for your immune system. Um, so it ends up being a little confusing. We, there are lots of different symptoms of lupus because your immune system is carried through your blood. So white blood cells are the immune system cells. So anywhere your blood can go, lupus can go. So patients can get um, the characteristic rash is the butterfly rash or the wolf bite rash, which is why lupus is wolf. Um, but you can get rashes, you can get joint pains, you can get involvement of your kidneys, your lungs, your heart, your brain, anywhere your blood can go, lupus can go. So it's just this sort of broad disease of an overactive immune system. What causes it? What causes your immune system to attack yourself, your body? Yeah, so nobody really knows. And I think that's also a part of the mystery. Um, we know that some people are more likely to get it because of their genes. Uh, there are certain, many, many genes actually that may slightly increase the risk or slightly decrease the risk here and there. Um, there's no one gene that is the lupus gene, right? Um, so it's sort of like tipping the scale towards lupus, but it doesn't give us the whole answer. Um, we also know that certain infections, people who get certain viral infections are more likely to get lupus. Uh, we know that certain exposures, so uh, certain people who are, you know, work farming, agricultural industries, those pesticides may increase the risk of lupus. Uh, certain silica dust that we have in buildings can increase the risk of lupus. So we think it's multifactorial, and nobody really can pinpoint one reason why someone might get lupus. Is it more women, more black women? Because I, I feel like I know a lot of black women with lupus. Is, are we yeah. a large group that have lupus? And why, why do you think, I mean, I know it's genetic, but why do you think that is? Yeah, absolutely. So it is by far and away more women. So if you take 10 lupus patients, on average, nine of them would be women, one would be a man, right? Wow. So it is very much more likely to affect women. Uh, it's much more likely to affect black women and, and women of color. Uh, and people don't know why that is. Actually, I'm a researcher, and so my research is on why it is that lupus affects black people um, and what we can do about that. Um, yeah, but for every... so. For every one white woman with lupus, there are three to four black women with lupus. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we don't make up that larger population in America, so. We do not. Yeah. 866-801-8255. And, I, and as I'm thinking, I, you know, when I got the diagnosis that I had lupus, I, I rejected mm -hmm. it because I feel fine. I, was, I felt fine. I had a spot on my head uh, that was red, and then it lost hair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the freak is this? And she was like, oh, that's lupus. And I was like, no, it's not. And what's the difference between discoid lupus? I think Seal had discoid lupus on his face. Did he? I think, yes. yeah. What um, is the difference? That's controversial, but that's... Yeah, it is. People say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's important to realize that there's... So there's systemic lupus which is the you know, lupus that affects the skin and joints and internal organs. And, and so you have to have, uh, in order to have systemic lupus, you have to have multiple body parts that are affected. So there are 11 different criteria. You have to have at least four of them and then blood tests that are suggestive of lupus. Now, some people just get the skin disease. So some people get discoid lupus or certain rashes that go along with lupus. And those people don't necessarily get the systemic disease. Um, a small fraction of them go on to develop the full disease, um, about 10% or so. Uh, but the rest of them actually just have the skin findings and that's it. So treatment, uh, you know, I, I started reading because, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I don't listen to doctors. I know it's bad, but I'm like, okay, I, you might have gone to school, but I don't think you're, you know. So, so, so I went and I was like autoimmune gut, 
your gut. So you got to make sure your biomes, you know, so I started doing that probiotics. I started go, doubling down on yeah. that. And then I, I went to a holistic person who was like, well, if you have eczema, that's autoimmune and autoimmune usually comes in groups. So the discoid, the eczema, okay, fix your gut. And that's what I focused on. Is that, is that a good method to? Well, I would say that, you know, we have, there are two categories of how you take care of yourself. You know, there's, there's dealing with illness and promoting wellness. And I think Western medicine, especially Western doctors, we're really good at taking care of illness, right? Mm. And so yeah. in lupus, um, there are many cases where you do need to take care of illness. You need to take medications, that, depending on the different uh, manifestations, you may need chemotherapy. Uh, so I think there wow. are ways in which it's important to take care of the illness. And I always encourage my patients, you know, the other thing about lupus that makes it a challenge is that it comes and goes. In a certain year, a lupus patient may have two or three episodes where it's very bad, and the rest of the time, they feel fine. And so it's really hard to convince my patients that they should be continuing to take these medications when they're saying, hey, I feel good. You know, I prayed it away, like, like this is gone and I'm fine, right? Um, but it's also a very tenacious disease. It's something that, you know, if, it, if it's come once, it can come again. And the more times that we allow it flare up, the more it can injure the body and the less length of healthy life that a patient will have. Mm. So I do encourage patients who have lupus to continue their medications. That said, wellness is also incredibly, incredibly important in lupus. We know that poor diet, poor sleep, um, you know, not taking care of yourself, stress, all of these things can cause lupus to flare. It's an autoimmune condition. So what does the immune system do? It takes care of you when you're stressed. Uh, often because of an infection, but sometimes for other reasons. So all of the things you mentioned, like healthy diet, taking care of your microbiome, sleeping well, you know, having a stress management plan, those are going to be important for making sure that lupus patients have healthy immune systems and don't have to go through these flares. COVID-19, how does that impact people who have lupus? Yeah, so this is a huge topic and a topic of lots of research, and I'm doing some of that work with uh, our team here. Um, but, you know, COVID-19, everyone always says, oh, it's a virus, it doesn't discriminate. But it kind of does, right? Um, not in that it itself discriminates, just that it's going to come where there's opportunity to come, Right. So I think there are two ways that COVID-19 disproportionately affects lupus patients. One, we know that people who have pre-existing conditions, meaning they're coming to this potential pandemic with their own health ailments, are more likely to get it and to get severe disease. Um, The other thing is that COVID-19 is really ravishing minority communities. Um, and our lupus patients are disproportionately of minority backgrounds. So, you know, we have to expect that the things that make any minority more likely to come in contact with this, this illness are also going to be more common in our lupus patients. And, in, and having an autoimmune disease, maybe a couple, maybe three, your body is fighting on so many fronts that now coronavirus, novel coronavirus comes in, there are no more white blood cells to go out and attack and fight off this disease. So that makes it even more, that being an autoimmune disease makes it even more complicated, does it, Dr. Blazer? Yeah, so that is that is very insightful of you, and I tell my patients this all the time, you know, um, and this is the reason why we try to make sure that lupus is stable, especially in the times of COVID. So a lot of my patients are saying, okay, well, I'm taking medicine, that are going to suppress my immune system. So I'm going to stop taking those because I want my immune system to be strong in case I get get COVID or someone around me has COVID, right? And I think that sounds reasonable, but we have to remember when you have a lupus flare, your immune system is worried about things it shouldn't be worried about, right? Instead of trying to fight this virus, it's over here trying to fight your kidney. So an immune system that is active against your own tissues is not as good 
at fighting infection. So we really are trying to make sure that all of our lupus patients are as stable and quiet and healthy as possible so that the immune system can tackle any viruses should, should it have to. We have, we have several callers. We have a couple of minutes. Can you stick around after our break? Can you stick around? Do you have time? Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I know no you're, she's a doctor. Uh, Dr. Blazer, and where can people uh, connect? Are you on social media? Yeah, so I have a Twitter. So I'm uh, Ashira MD on Twitter. Ashira, so. A-S-H-I-R-A. Yes, underscore MD. Underscore MD, because she's a doctor. Dr. Yeah. Blazer is here. 